What a lot of repetitive maths books there are around for kids. It'll be things like you get a book and on the first page there'll be one duck, then you turn the page there'll be two ducks, turn the page again there'll be three ducks, and it kind of just carries on like that throughout the entire book. Or you'll have a book of a counting song, or it'll be a book of numerals and go like one then two and all that kind of stuff, and there's loads of books like that. Luckily, I've come up with six top maths books for kids all of these are fantastic for all sorts of different skills. If you're a parent of a child between the ages of three to seven, brilliant, these books will be great for you. Also, if you're a teacher or if you work in a preschool or anything like that, fantastic. You can use all these books for a range of different activities and skills and getting children excited and interested about numbers and maths. Okay, here we go. Number one is this book, which is called Triangle. Uh, Triangle by Mac Barnett. This is a beautiful book for introducing 2D shapes in particular, particularly thinking about triangles and squares. Great for children three and up, this one. It's basically about a triangle that lives in a triangle world. Here he is. Um, and it's, for example, the door is a triangle, the picture on the wall is a triangle, there are mountains that are triangles. Later on in the book, he meets a square. The square lives in a square world where there are square pictures. There's a square door and all this kind of stuff. Towards the end, there's a bit of a joke that the children find really amusing. Uh, basically, the square cannot get into the triangle's house. And so, of course, triangle laughs at him, finds it hilarious. Oh, oh, you're stuck. But then, triangle gets a bit scared. It goes really dark because the, the square is blocking out all the light. And the square says, ha ha, that was my evil trick all along to scare you. <laughs> For some bizarre reason, children find that absolutely hilarious. It's nice to have a bit of a, a funny twist in a maths book. So there we go. Triangle. Definitely one to give a, uh, to have a go of. Book number two. This one is My Mum and Dad Make Me Laugh. This one is by Nick Sharrett. This is probably the best book I've ever found for patterns. The whole book is really, really visual. Uh, this is one example of a page. There's this uh, zebra crossing. Throughout the book, there are loads and loads of repeating patterns. For example, on this page, there is this zebra crossing that goes, you know, white, black, white, black. The dad's suit's a pattern, his scarf, uh, the umbrella, the cat. Loads and loads of patterns on every single page. This book is brilliant for doing art activities that link to maths. Things like uh, you could do uh, painting, you could do a collage, they could build things. Great for thinking about patterns and seeing what they look like in reality. Before we go on to book number three, I should say please do subs uh, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell. I'm going to do loads and loads more free content like this, at least two videos a week. Uh, I've been a teacher for the last 10 years, working with children ages from the age of three to five. Uh, and I now do courses all around the UK. I do uh, early phonics, early maths, fine motor, practical, exciting training courses. And now I'm trying to bring that to YouTube as well with lots of free hints and tips on how you can make learning fun. So that is uh, subscribe. Okay, let's go on to book number three. This one is called One is a Snail, Ten is a Crab. I'd say this is probably my favorite ever math book. Um, it's by April Pulley Sayer and Jeff Sayer. Let's take a look at this one. It's all about counting this book. Uh, it starts really simple. It's uh, one is a snail, and that's because this is uh, a snail's foot, apparently. Then it goes on to two is a person, one, two. Three is a person and a snail, one, two, three. The book has these really fantastic arrows in that are really good for helping children to point and practicing counting. Uh, they're great for adding as well. This is like two and one. It's really sort of visual, and a great introduction to what adding looks like. The book gets trickier and trickier. It's things like eight is a spider, uh, nine is a spider and a snail, so different combinations. 10 is a crab, because it's got 10 legs, apparently, if you can count the pincers. Towards the end, there are things like 60 is six crabs. This is great for counting in tens. Uh, lots of children are good at chanting in tens. They're good at going 10, 20, 30, that kind of stuff. But actually applying it in a book is a different skill. You're going like 10, 20, 30, that kind of thing. So great for that kind of, those kind of skills. Also, if you have any children that count in sixes, Brilliant, they can count the insects, like 6, 12, 18, and uh, that kind of stuff as well. Towards the end, it's 100, which is 10 crabs, or if you're really counting slowly, 100 snails. 
And it's great for even very young children from, even from the age of three, I'd say, to uh, great for them to see what big numbers look like. A lot of children, they love big numbers. They love like a billion, a million, all that kind of stuff. But they don't really know what it looks like. So it's nice just to see it and make it visual. Book number four. This one is called Up and Down. This is by Britta Teckentrup. This is a fantastic book for positional words and positional language. Words like up, down, under, in, all that kind of stuff. There's lots of great opposites in this book as well. For example, uh, on this page, he swam in front of the playful dolphins and behind the solemn sharks. He swam above the bobbing jellyfish and below the tickly octopus. Fantastic for opposites, fantastic for positional words. Up and down, give it a go. Book number five is How Much Does a Ladybird Weigh? This is a super book for weight and comparing sizes and things like that. It's by Alison Limontani. Here we go. It starts with 10 ants, and 10 ants weigh the same as one ladybird. There's lots of skills in this book. It's good for number recognition. There's always a big number on each page. It's good for one-to-one -one counting. There's always lots of things to count. Uh, and it's great for thinking about size and weight as well. Nine ladybirds weigh the same as one grasshopper. Eight grasshoppers weigh the same as one stickleback fish. And it's kind of, the animals get bigger and bigger. The last one is a swan, the biggest animal, one swan. And one swan weighs the same as 362,880 ladybirds. So again, it's nice to see big numbers. Children love to see big, interesting numbers and a great book for that. Book number six is How Many Legs? This is a little bit trickier, this one. I probably would only have a go of this with probably five-year-olds uh, probably, and definitely six-year-olds and seven-year-olds will love this one. How many legs? It's basically a book about counting the number of legs that uh, different people, animals have. It starts nice and easy. There's a boy, he's at a party, and he's got two legs, obviously. Then who comes to the party? The polar bear. How many legs are there now? Yeah, there's two, add four. And different animals come to join the boy's party. Towards the end, there's all sorts of uh, animals, there's uh, all sorts of numbers going on. And the idea is to try and count along as you go and add on the, the numbers. The very last page of the book has the, uh, the answer. I would show the answer, but it's got an exact answer of how many legs there are in the book altogether, which is quite a high number. And it's great for calculating and thinking about adding in the real world and counting. Okay, there we go. They are my top six maths books for lots of different skills, as I say, please do subscribe and hit the bell for lots more videos like this. All sorts of exciting, relevant, topical activities to try either at home or at school. Thank you very much.